Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, and you know what that means on Tuesday, right? It is Trending Tuesday. Good morning, everyone. This is Carol So, a.k.a. Naughty Boss, live with two... Sisters. Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Janice, a.k.a. Wellness Diva 5.0. What am I triumphing over? A lot of things, but let's just say I have found, <laughs> excuse me, a new love for Clubhouse been doing a lot of been invited to speak on a lot of stages which is pretty exciting so that's what i'm trying to be triumphing over um my fear of public speaking even though it's all audio there's still that you know that initial so that's what i'm triumphing over um although <laughs> i feel there's a lot of Hmm, how should I put it? A lot of heart and soul in the air today, meaning things are somewhat discombobulated. So what is your take on your triumph? I want to hear a positive one and then we can like kind of dive into conversation. Well, a positive one. I always got a positive one. I mean, what's the point of you know talk being a health and mindset and health coach that we are? without having some positivity and spreading positivity. So mine, and I don't normally talk about my personal achievements uh, a lot on what we do as two, two sisters, more of a collaboration and, you know, where we want, we, we, where I, where we want to present the possibilities for your own journeys and how you can rediscover green ways of inventing yourself, uh, keeping those check marks going towards your health and wellness. But I do, I'm going to, I'm going to give myself a little kudos here. I don't normally do that. Uh, we played some some competitive pickleball games last night. And yes, for the first time in the history of learning and being introduced to pickleball, my partner and I, which happened to be my son-in-law, we actually beat my husband and one of his friends. Not by much, not by much. It was a, I want to say it was a 10, 11, 8 victory, no, 11, 7 victory, I believe. So you normally play to 10, you got to win by two. And uh, so, and you play to seven. So it was 11 to seven victory. That does not normally happen. My husband is a much better pickleball player than I am, but I have to say my game, I've been working on specific shots, uh, you know, because part of the game is, you know, knowing where to shoot it, be a little uh, offense and defense where you're placing the pickleball. So uh, I've been working on a few shots that are starting to really come together. Uh, my serve has been pretty, pretty on point. And uh, I took my husband by surprise. So it was a good win. So that was the first triumph that I had. Um, you know, in regards to, you know, this the heaviness that we repeatedly have talked about over the last few days of what's going on in our country with our soldiers. It's almost like you have this heavy burden brick weight on, on, on your chest, on your heart. And you're, you're trying passionately to like, Oh, how do I remove that? How do I not feel for what is going on in the country? And I always say the best way to triumph over hardships, to triumph over sadness, devastation, heartache is by doing something positive for other people. And a lot of times that positive piece that you try to bring to the table, I got to be honest, is sometimes not well received. What I mean is it, it, specifically talking to causes, when you're fighting for a cause that you know so many will benefit from. You get people that are complacent. They talk that good game. We're right there with you. We're going to, you know, march along. We're going to do those emails. We're going to, you know, we're going to pitch in. And it still, you know, really only ends up being a core few people. It's easily to get distracted and get discouraged. You know, that's kind of where I find my myself right now. So how I triumphed over that is I keep pushing forward. You know, I look at instrumental people that are, were in our, our history that were only one that started a movement, that were only one that got on a bus and refused to get off, that maybe marched down the street, you know, in DC, 
uh, to the Lincoln Memorial, to the Capitol, to the White House. You know, maybe one brave mom that stood up who is uh, has a fear of speaking yet found the courage to speak up at a school board meeting uh, and share uh, her journey and her and, and her her passion for what she was fighting for and never thought that she could do it. So I try to, when you feel that way, when you feel like, you know, you're, you're trying to do the right things, you're trying to get involved and you just can't muster up the people. Again, it goes back to that saying that we are not in control of anyone else's actions. We're not even control of anyone else, the way that they react or act, but we are in control of what we do. And at the end of the day, if you know you, you served well, whether it's within your family, whether it's in your community, your local government, your state government, your national government, your church, your businesses, whatever it may be, if you could stand in the mirror and say, I did a good job today, maybe I was only one of one today, but maybe tomorrow there might be two, maybe there'll be three, and maybe I'll go back to one the following day. If you stay the course, and it's a hard course, meaning it's a hard journey. It's a hard journey to stay postured in your belief that you're doing something right. Even those those that join in and eventually fall off or those that just don't, there's always a few core that find that spark. So if I see that spark in someone else, guess what? That kind of refuels my spark. So find something that's gonna refuel that passion. Even if you have to step away from those that are within your circle that say they're gonna do one thing, but do another, you know, it doesn't mean that their passion is any less. Maybe they've got own distractions. You're not in their shoes. Maybe they've got something going on within their family, within their own personal being. So utilize, there's so many avenues of ways that you can re-spark and refuel that passion to make sure that you don't derail. But rest assured, there are days that you can take a time out from it. There are days where you can say, I have to refresh my heart, I've got to refresh my energy because if I don't, I'm no good to anybody. So refresh, re-spark, re, uh, rejuvenate that goodness that you of what your belief is and know that you're not alone. And when I say that, you could have someone clear across the country who's fighting the same battle that you are and is feeling the exact same thing that you are too. You know, maybe it's time to pause and take a break from one particular group if it has to do with something with social media find another one that sparks that interest uh, because there are, are so many people that, it, you know, we're in living in such a, and I hate to use the word tumultuous times, but because there are a lot of good things that are going on as well, sometimes you got to dig deep. Okay. I had to take my glasses off. That's okay. Okay. And that, all right. So I love what you said about going forward because a lot of times when you are involved with a cause that is so deeply rooted, um, so very emotional, so very passionate. It's hard to feel that, not that you're the only one, but that maybe people have fallen off. And it is to keep pushing forward because that's how we create the ripple effect <laughs> through those times when it seems when it seems that maybe all hope is lost because hope is never lost when that hope, when that passion, when that fuel is fired within our hearts to move forward. So that I think is amazing. Um, as far as your win with pickleball, Yahoo. I think that's pretty awesome. I know that you have, you know, you have found your passion and I, I really enjoy hearing about it from your point of view. Um, I would say the one time that I did try it, um, I kind of sucked, but that's okay. And that was actually right before my, I broke my foot. My foot was bothering me. So I wonder if that was my body's way of telling me, maybe you shouldn't be running around on a pickable ball court. But in well, any event- Well, I'm gonna inject with that as I'm gonna tell you, I did not, I mean, you don't just get on the court and automatically start playing good. Believe me, I know, I, you know, I can, uh, I can sufficiently say when I was on the court, you know, I had some basic skills. Uh, and even today, you know, if I don't take, if I don't keep my eye on that ball, it's so easy to miss. 
So I encourage people that even if you're just starting out and we have a nice core group here uh, that is starting out and they got the bug and they, the range of uh, agility and their range of, you know, even having those particular skills vary. Uh, but when you, you know, when you just keep going at it, going at it, going at it, and then you kind of get in that rhythm. So once you, uh, your feet and everything is back to healthy girl, you're going to get a paddle and we're going to do it. Well, I certainly hope so. We all know I have issues with my feet, but hmm, I'll get out the violin, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready to, um, really kind of cultivate that interest, you know, always looking for something that, <laughs> maybe it's challenging that maybe pushes me past what I think I can handle. Um, the last couple of days, I kind of, I've been working out, but at a slower pace than I normally do, obviously still doing my walking and doing gentle <laughs> rowing. Um, and that's okay. And that's perfectly okay. Cause that's my body's way of saying, you need to slow down a little bit. And I've been noticing that lately. So that for me is a triumph because normally I'd just be like, oh, I don't care. I'm just, boom, I'm going to go dive right on into it. And although my heart and soul is into the diving aspect of it, because we all know I love my kickboxing. We all know I love rowing. More importantly, I love me and I have to honor how my body feels. Now, it really was not always that way, but I guess, <laughs> excuse me, I guess that comes with maturity. <laughs> Absolutely. Try and, and, and trial and error. I mean, you know, we talk about health and wellness and diets and how uh, we don't necessarily believe in diets. We believe in different aspects of different food groups in a balanced diet. Um, but we are, uh, as a family, are going to be embarking on a new journey. We've been recently watching uh, some different documentaries and really found it interesting that a lot of corporations that have a big stake in our food sources uh, have a lot of influence on nutrition uh, and not always in a good way. Uh, there was a very interesting documentary and I'm going to post it uh, under this link and I have the picture of it. It's on Netflix and it, I, I was shocked. I, I, I still have a little bit more to watch about it, but you know, my husband, John and I watched it along with our daughter and son-in-law and it really sparked a new interest in eating and, and still eating um, from around the rainbow, but much differently. And it's uh, more plant-based now. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been finding and doing research on different people that we know have different medical issues, uh, also have different autoimmune issues, uh, as well as uh, like retaining fluids, whole gamut of things. And we've watched their journey um, and also through through this documentary, where you know we always say a 21 day cycle is the initial of getting toxins out of your body to kind of start that clean way of living. I'm excited that you know the nutritional program that I do is a plant based, but I'm also uh, you know going to be removing things that I had really. I mean, you know, you hear different things about different food groups, uh, but I was really shocked on how the uh, cheese industry and how it was presented with cheese. And I'm not gonna, I can't even say the verbiage of how they used it because I think about it and I really get nauseous. But, uh, and I'm, you know, not that I'm, I wouldn't say I was, I'm a cheese addict, but what I did learn is the way that cheese, once it's digested in your, your, your stomach, your colon and all of that, uh, it sends receptors to the brain uh, to the same brain area, believe it or not, uh, that those who suffer from uh, being a, a substance abuser of heroin, um, because they, they hit certain receptors that actually the body craves it. So somebody that's a heroin user, they actually physically crave it. So it's not a question of sometimes a lot of people say, you have the choice not to do it. Like this is a real crave that these receptors are. Well, cheese, ironically, hits those same receptors in such a way 
And I started to kind of look around with people that I know specifically that are really big cheese lovers. And I started to watch like how much cheese they actually do consume in addition to myself, because I love a good Pecorino Romano. I mean, I like a really hard, I love blue cheese. There's just certain cheeses that I do absolutely love. And when I really started paying more attention, like I had so many aha moments in the last few days of, oh my God, that person eats cheese all the time. Could it be, you know, that the, that's what's happening within them? So uh, cheese was one of them. Dairy obviously is another, is another big source. So now, you know, and the myth, um, this particular documentary talked about what is the myth that we've always been told about milk? Milk does the body good. Milk uh, helps with, you know, strong bones with, um, you know, especially as you get older. Those are all myths. I had no idea to the extent, and I love the fact that in the health and wellness industry, you know, we get to kind of push the envelope of different areas of health and wellness and do some digging to really uh, crush the old myths of certain things. Now, the one thing that we both agree on that we chatted about many, many times with uh, our listeners, viewers, and clients and customers is that doctors are not trained in nutrition. Uh, they're not educated in that in such a way that they really should be. Because to me, nutrition and medicine go hand in hand because there is medicine that really is a natural medicine of good nutrition. So they really showcased, uh, they showcased this one particular woman, uh, overweight, mentally depressed on a lot of uh, antidepressants medication, also suffered from acute uh, asthma, you know, very just feeling debilitated in her forties. And she decided to uh, go vegan and uh, find other ways to get protein, eliminate obviously the dairy. And within a week, she started to feel like her joints could move better. And after three weeks, only three weeks, she is off all medication, her mm -hmm. asthma medication, her um, uh, antidepressant medication, her, like all these different things that she went from doctor to doctor to doctor. And she said, I feel like I lost so many years of my life. And when she went back to her doctor and, you know, they were just, you know, obviously did some blood, blood, blood work and whatnot and were tested and said, you they couldn't believe it. So there's something to say about, and we've talked, we always talk about that, what we put in our body, but the medicinal uh, aspect of eating a very well-balanced diet, but, you know, one bodybuilder, because, you know, a, a lot of people that I know that are bodybuilders or use a lot of weightlifting as a tool to, you know, keep fit. And those that are, you know, really bodybuilders have the presumption of, you know, they've got to eat, you know, all these protein powder drinks, a lot of meat, a lot of chicken. And even, even, even from the organic aspect of it, they, they ruled out a lot of things that are not so good in organic foods. And I witnessed in, and watched the interview of several vegan bodybuilders. And they basically said, look at, you know, one, there was one line, it was actually an ex NFL player who said, what, get, what good is your body looking good from the inside when it's dying on, uh, on the outside, when it's dying on the inside? He was having, you know, he was doing everything a normal traditional bodybuilder would do, but he was finding that he was having a lot of, ten, uh, you know, his muscles and his joints were killing him. He was having a lot of inflammation. Um, he, you know, he, he, his, he was losing his strength. Now that he's been strictly only doing vegan, uh, he's lifting over a hundred pounds more than he was when he was on the other, you know, eating the other foods and whatnot. Uh, he's found that he's more toned. He, he, the inflammation has gone down. He doesn't have that blow anymore. He has better stamina and better mental clarity. How cool is that? So I'm going to put the link. I don't remember the exact name. It's on Netflix, but and, and it wasn't just one doctor. These were a lot of nutritionists and doctors that really went through uh, the, the goodness of, and one of the examples which made so much sense when you thought about it, when you think of an elephant, a lion, a tiger, and they're very muscular 
animals. They're just, they're muscular, right? All they do is eat plants. All they do is eat plants. And I yeah. love, the, love the saying by Hippocrates, and it goes way back to Hippocrates. Let thy food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. That is amazing. And uh, I think I may have seen that, but yeah, I will definitely look at that again. Um, <laughs> the other thing about food and sources, you have to wonder why, and I know that I've chatted about this before. I have what's called a non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So why in my early, when I was in my early 50s, because I'm now in my late 50s, why at that stage in my life am I having a glued sensitivity? Goes back to your food source. I have since come to find out that I am okay. Like Gary has these little crackers and they're very little, but they're based from, um, they're not wheat. They're more of a grain. <laughs> and even though that is gluten, I can have like two or three of those, I'm fine. But if those were wheat thins, 20, 30 minutes later, I'm dying. So it all goes back to the food source. The other thing, 90%, and I'm sticking to my 90%, 90% of what we put into our bodies causes inflammation, which causes cancer, diabetes, and the list goes on and on and well, on. Well, here, here's an interesting stat too that this particular uh, documentary talked about and, and the hypocrisy you know, of these big corporations. So you have the, um, the uh, breast cancer, uh, Susan, what is it? Susan G. Komen uh, Breast Awareness or yeah. you know, Foundation or whatnot. So part of the study was that uh, dairy, 53%, they, they found that 53% of uh, patients and or that 53% of your, something about either it's your dairy or whatever, dairy uh, adds 53% more chance of you getting breast cancer. Now I did not know that. So this particular person that was working on the documentary called up and, and called uh, the, that particular uh, breast cancer awareness foundation and said, why is that not on your website? You know, as a kind of like a health alert that, you know, dairy contribute to it, you know, we, the data shows that dairy contributes to breast cancer. And so, you know, it's over 50%. Why is that? And, and no one would answer him. You actually got to hear him calling. So then he went in person to one of these, the local chapter where he lived. And they said they would gladly talk to him if he took the cameras off. Now, the ironic thing about one woman who healed her breast cancer by eliminating dairy completely um, said that the, the problem that she had is those, those particular, the particular foundation, they're more interested in about the color of pink and the ribbon and organizing after the fact that someone has it versus being proactive and getting to the root of the cause before the person succumbs to it and the money. And then what she thought, also thought was very, the irony of it was a lot of milk cartons and yogurt and whatever, having the pink ribbon on it. So you're saying to support this cause with one of the things that causes the disease. How does that even happen? And it really goes into more detail about other corporations and the influence. Like if you were look at, I think it's the medical journal and the nutritional piece to it, a lot of big corporations spend big money to make sure that they're the ones that have the influence over the article. So there's a lot, lot of stuff to be said about always keeping an open mind to, to learning something new, number one, because I learned a lot of different things new and you know, being in the health and wellness industry, it, it constantly changes. So you've got to make sure that you're up to date on things, but also not being com complacent and saying, my best advocate is me, how am I feeling? And what is, what's the worst that can happen? Let me try changing up how I, what I'm putting in my body for a week. 
just try it for seven days, then push it to maybe 14, push it to 21. I mean, the ideal is a 90 day total uh, turnaround, but you could see a lot happen within 21 days. So as a family, we've collectively decided to do it to see, to see if we could fall in love with that type of lifestyle. I mean, there's a, some food groups that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna be difficult, but you know, if we are really trying to, like you said, you know, let thy medicine be thy food and food be thy medicine, it's gotta start for me. I can't talk about it, but not do the work. Right, exactly. And it just goes to show you too that, um, throughout the decades and as you start to gracefully and respectfully age our bodies change our nutrition changes defic deficiencies tend to show up a lot more sensitivities show up so <clears throat> how can i combat that by obviously for me not eating things that have gluten in it i have to be very careful of that you know even products such as makeup um hair care products have gluten in it. Thankfully, I am not that susceptible to that. And I am so grateful for that. But I have to be careful of even sauces, barbecue sauces, because I can get very sick from that, which is not pleasant. Anybody that has a gluten sensitivity and people that have celiac, oh my gosh, so many people have it so much worse than I do. So I, I certainly sympathize and empathize with you with that you know the other thing that, <laughs> excuse me that you can do too for, for yourself but for your family is it's really important to diary what you are eating if you're trying to get to the root cause of a something happening like say you're not feeling your best and you're like okay i've been to the doctors blood works fine this is fine that's great but if you are supplying yourself with some type of nutrition that is not doing you good, meaning let's say you go to a restaurant and I love bread, but I obviously can't eat bread <laughs> and you're filling up on bread. And then afterwards, after you have your meal, you're feeling <laughs> sick. What is that telling you? So it's really important to write down what you eat what time you eat it, and how you felt about 30 minutes later. Guarantee you do that along with whatever program you're doing, or maybe you're just starting out. Maybe you want to try something new, which would be great. Write down the specific things about that that you never really thought of or it never occurred to you. Gee, 30 minutes after I ate potatoes. I felt like I had a stomach ache. Uh, I was burping. I was doing this. I was doing that. That's That really is your body's way of kind of waving the flag and saying, hey, you need to, you need to kind of back off on that. Also, <laughs> excuse me, your emotions with what you are eating are you one of those people, and I've been guilty of this, are you one of those people that, hmm, you eat something you know for darn well it's not good for you, but you do it anyways. How did that make you feel afterward? Write it down. And I do practice what I preach. I did that several years ago. And what I learned about myself is there are a lot of foods that I absolutely love that I can either no longer consume or if I have a little bit of it, it's okay. So for instance, the other day, um, potato salad, I'm famous for making my potato salad. I have to be very, very careful with potatoes. So I only had like a little, taste that day and I was fine but had I gone back for seconds it just would would have not been good well I'm glad I didn't have that issue although there were there was probably a little bit more onion in it that I prefer she makes a really 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 good potato salad so yeah I went for seconds I don't have any issues with potato salad on a funny note for those people that actually do love bread I'm a bread eater I like bread 
I watch how much I eat. The best bread that you can eat is rye bread. It's great for your digestion. It's great from a nutritional standpoint, uh, but it's the least uh, type of a bread that's going to give you uh, inflammation and or, you know, issues. So if you like bread um, and you want it once in a while, go for a healthier bread uh, and an oat bread. Oat bread is also very good for you. Um, and I believe there's a lot of uh, vegans that eat uh, oat bread, but they want to make sure that it's obviously dairy free and whatnot. So there's different ways. You just got to start reading labels. You just got to kind of look at what things are out there. Um, but there, there are many resources, but this particular documentary you know, you may you may take a little piece from it. You may take a lot out of it. Uh, I'm going to watch it again. It's probably something that I'm going to have to watch a few times to really digest everything, to really understand, you know, that the, the, the greater power being of the corporations on how they really influence our food. I, you know, I knew there was some of that going on. I didn't know it to the extent that this documentary exposes. So that was interesting. Uh, you know, and it's also a lot of people documentaries are great sources for information and what i love the probably the most spark about all that is you learn something you come out of it not just being sitting there what being a couch potato watching quote a movie you're watching a doc which that's okay too once in a while i'm not saying that you can't do that because there's some great movies and shows out there but i love watching something that i i take away uh, not just a plot or, you know, whatever from the movie piece to it, but I actually learn something. I love learning something, whether it's within a book, whether it's in a podcast or with, you know, a documentary. I love documentaries. Not all. I'm not a big Western documentary. A lot of people like those. That's not really my forte, nor am I a big Western fan either for, for you know, movies. But I do love a good documentary that teaches us. I love history documentaries too, which, you know, seems to be a a dying, you know, breed of, of what's coming out. But I'm glad to see that there are some, especially some some people in podcasts that are really uh, reciting and or interjecting with our history because history is so important as well. But anywho, that is Triumph Tuesday. What are you going to be triumphing over today, Jan? Or at least attempting to? Well, that's a loaded question. What I am going to be doing, what I want to triumph over today is mapping out my my book so i hopefully will do that and but i also what's really important to me is my next reading list i am not going to meet my september 1st deadline i probably could do it and i'm still going to try to do it i am on my 10th book and i have a few more chapters to go so who knows that i may be um that may be my desk book for the day so that, you know, I really want to meet that, that goal that I set for myself to read 10 books before September 1st. So I have a few more chapters to go. We'll see. Oh, that's nothing. You can do it. You can well, do now, that. Well, now who knows, you know, um, I'm going to go for it. And I will obviously fill everybody in tomorrow with that. So on that note, two sisters on a triumph, tum on blah, blah, blah. Let's back that up on a triumph Tuesday. And what are you going to triumph over today? Let us know. My name is Janice, AKA Wellness Diva 5.0. And I am with two sisters. And this is Carol Sue, AKA Naughty Boss. Gonna try our very first day. This is what I'm working on triumphing over of only eating a vegan diet. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm not gonna say that it's gonna be easy, but you know what? What's the worst that's going to happen, right? Nothing. Nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to try it. What are you going to try and over? Let us know. We will see you tomorrow for Wealth Wellness Wednesday. Everyone have a great day. Be, care, uh, be careful out there. Be kind and always pay gratitude forward. Take care. Happy one.